friends, welcome in. How are you doing today? Um, I'm doing all right. I'm in a little tie-dye dress situation that's a little tight on the arms from uh, Shein. So there's that. But um, I'm going to be doing a full look with the Allure Reader's Choice Award winners. They just came out like a couple days ago. And as I was looking through the list, I thought, okay, I feel like I'm familiar with pretty much all this stuff. So I thought, let's create a look with it and let's chat about, you know, the fact that these are award winners. There are a couple of things that I don't have but for the most part we got it here today and I know there will be people who are gonna say like I'm skeptical of any time there's an awards put out by any publication because those same brands are paying to have ads in the magazines whatever and I'm like isn't that YouTube just kidding but yeah um, I know what you mean but at the same time I'm pretty sure these are voted on this particular one is readers choice there are other times where there's an editor's choice and that might be a little bit more like oh how'd you come up with that but even if something is rigged in all this process Process, um, all the more reason to go ahead and put the things to the test and see if they're actually good. Okay, so the foundation winner is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. Found that to be kind of interesting because, you know, it's been around for a long time. It's not really like, like it's a good foundation, don't get me wrong, but I never thought of it as like, wow, this is the most exceptional one. Um, I have it in light beige. I've had it for a while. I more recently actually, um, was retrying out the dewy version. So you have the matte and poreless and then the dewy and smooth. And I'm just dabbing on this matte and poreless. It's going to be a straight up medium coverage foundation here. Um, you could maximize the coverage a bit more if you blended it in with a brush, but I have to pay attention to what was voted as favorite tool, and that is the beauty blender. And so I will end up using the beauty blender <laughs> to blend this out. Um, I do love a beauty blender. I really think it is the superior sponge. I don't like to be a real sponge snob. I mean, there are other sponges I can use. I think e.l.f. makes one that's pretty close texture wise, but I mean, I just love the Beauty Blender shape. I love its texture. It's not quite as soft and spongy as like the Real Techniques sponges are. Don't get me wrong, it's still soft, but there's like just more holes. The hole is more porous is the way I've described it before. And I just think it's perfect for blending in foundation. In the past few months, I feel like I've just fallen in love with my beauty blender all over again after not using it for a long time. So there's one go round with the matte and poreless. And I'm like, okay, it's a fine matte medium coverage foundation. I might build it just a little bit so we can see where it goes from there. But you know, I was thinking, if, if the voters have a real awareness of drugstore makeup and they're gonna vote a drugstore foundation as a winner, like, why not Maybelline Superstay? Does that not, like, I don't know. Not everybody's all about the fullest coverage. We know that. I'm dabbing a little more, like, over the center of the face. It is buildable. And that's kind of satisfying. But with the dewy and smooth, you're going to get like a similar coverage level. It's just going to be not so matte. I do like the matte pressed powder, the matte and poreless pressed powder that Maybelline has come out with. That's a good one. And of course, Fit Me as well is a nice powder. Maybelline's doing some good things. Don't get me wrong. But this just makes me think about Maybelline foundations and say, what about Superstay? If you haven't tried that one, that's going to give you full, full coverage and amazing staying power. The concealer that was voted as the winner is Tarte Shape Tape. So... Nobody's probably real surprised by that. A number of these picks show me that voters had some drugstore product awareness, and it makes me wonder, like, why not e.l.f.? Why not e.l.f. hydrating camo concealer or regular camo concealer? Tarte's extra creamy version may not have even been out at the time these awards were voted on. I'm not sure. I'm wearing this in light. I have it in a little lighter shade in this. My extra creamy is just a little deeper. But one thing's for sure. I mean, it covers. It covers incredibly well. It has good staying power. I think what gets a lot of people in trouble with shape tape is just like a huge over application of the product, but I mean you do your thing, whatever you want to do, but I think that less is more with this. You know, a couple of dots and then look how it spreads and how it covers and it helps out this foundation, which is, you know, just a medium coverage, kind of typical foundation. It helps the coverage of the overall look a ton, putting this concealer on. So in my opinion, yes, I like Tarte Shape Tape, but I love what e.l.f. Camo Concealer is doing. I recently was even using the non-hydrating version, just the regular version. And I wore that the other day with a very matte foundation too, the Too Faced Born This Way Matte. And my staying power was incredible. Like it didn't even look a little bit dry on my under eyes the day wore on. Like I was so impressed. They do say, 
under the clean category, they had Bare Minerals Loose Powder Foundation winning, but I think we want some kind of powder. And maybe somebody's watching this who has voted in these awards and maybe they don't know that if they're gonna use this, this is also a real fantastic product, the Fit Me Loose Powder, or maybe the people creating the awards categories should know like, hey, this is great too. Um, this is about as close as it gets, I think, drugstore-wise to the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. I really like Laura Mercier's pressed version of that. I think that's something really special, but if you don't want to spend that price and you don't mind having the powder loose, um, I think this is kind of the way to go. So I'm just setting my under eye here. I'm setting my nose. Not using a ton of powder, but I do know that this will help my staying power today. So there we go. Now they also didn't name a bronzer favorite. So I'm going to talk about the Hourglass Diffused Bronze Light here. This is one of my favorite bronzers. I think the depth level is so, so perfect. Um, we could also talk about Huda Beauty Tan Tour, but I just feel like I've gone on and on about that one lately and you guys are probably over it. Um, but that's a great cream bronzer option. It blends incredibly easily. But as far as powders go. This is so nice. It gives you that gentle bit of luminosity that maybe you can just kind of start to see there across the forehead. Um, but you put it on and it's another product that I could put into that makeup you can apply carelessly category because I just feel like it's hard to go too far wrong. And yet look at the nice bronziness I'm getting. They have more subtle tones of this, softer tones, um, but I just, I really like this one. I can contour with it and get a really satisfying contour. This is my BK Beauty 107 brush that I'm using. But yeah, we need a bronzer fave. Okay, now I'm just kind of like lightly, anything else on the brush, just letting that come all over here, but isn't that a gorgeous bronzer? Love that. Love that. Could have been a winner. The winner for blush. Okay, it's NARS Orgasm. So this one has been around for a long, long time. We're talking peachy pink shimmer. I'm gonna pop this on. I haven't really worn this one in a while. I need my memory refreshed. And have I ever duped this one? I feel like I probably have at some point, right? I mean, doesn't this seem like one you would look at to dupe? I'll have to look into my videos and stuff and see. But it hasn't been recently. The most recent NARS blush dupe that I came up with was um, CoverGirl Brick Rose duping Dolce Vita. But here's this classic peachy pink blush. I mean, it's nice. I'm kind of surprised that it's still standing out as a favorite for everybody. It's pretty, like it, it's flattering for sure. I'm not sure if you can tell, but it's got a little bit of glow in there. So if you haven't seen this one up close, I mean, it's an iconic product, so I guess it doesn't shock me that it's a winner, but I feel like there are just so many other great blushes out there, right? The winner for best highlighter, guys, is e.l.f. Baked Highlighter. I'm kicking myself because I know I once had that, and I know I decluttered it because I thought it wasn't that good. Um, I thought it was very dry. I seem to remember trying it and just feeling like it was baked texture, but not in a real good way. Now, that was probably right after it came out, like years ago. Maybe they've reformulated. Could somebody tell me, is that a legit, really good highlighter? Would I enjoy that highlighter? I assume it wouldn't have been voted a favorite in these awards if it didn't have some redeeming qualities, but I just, I, I wish I had that on hand right now. But my drugstore favorite and probably favorite overall highlight, this is my mini size of the Milani Strobe Light highlighters in the shade Afterglow. It's so perfect. It's basically like Becca quality highlight at a drugstore price. It's so pretty and pearly, and I feel like it would brighten absolutely any skin tone, fair or rich. Um, I'm just applying it with my Real Techniques setting brush, which has become my new favorite little highlighter brush. And if you're wondering why it's short, um, this has been around a long time. This is my older one. And some of the older Real Techniques brushes, they get a little sticky on their like rubbery ends over time. So I just did away with that. Brush works just fine. But look at this perfect glow that it's giving. And I could make it even more like pronounced if I wanted to. And if I had my hands on the e.l.f. baked highlight, I would be shocked if I liked it better than this. But that's on my list. I'm gonna get it again. I'm gonna try it again. I remember at first not really thinking it was all that great. So the winner for brows is Benefit Gimme Brow. And then there's also um, a breakthrough category. And guess what's in that? My current love, my Benefit Brow Microfilling Pin. So 
I'm going to be using both of these for my brow look today. Um, I'm kind of shocked that Gimme Brow is the winner just considering how flooded the market has become with brands putting out their own little gels and stuff. And I would have thought maybe, maybe Glossier Boy Brow too. That's like an iconic brow item, right? But Gimme Brow is the winner and um, it can be a one and done product. It probably has one of the tiniest little brushes, so it's very easy to control, and it does have some opaque color in it. But this brow micro filling pen, this is amazing. This is a breakthrough product because this is a pen style fill-in tool that is kind of forked and cut in an angle, and it's one of the only ones I've tried where you can use this in your brows and your brow doesn't get overloaded with moisture. They figured out a way to pace this product out of the felt tip. And I think maybe it is having the multiple tips that helps. Because I very recently tried something that just, it was unusable for me because the product just came out too fast. And I just end up loving my brows every time with this guy. I think it's very worthy of being an award winner. I'm kind of surprised, but again, it's in the breakthrough category. So it is something a little bit newer, maybe a little bit of a lesser known product compared to some of these other things. But that's gonna be the type of thing I repurchase when I run out for sure. Now, Benefit Gimme Brow. I think this is one of the OG like tinted brow cream, brow mascara types of products. The brush is teensy and um, a lot of brands don't go quite that small, but I think that's very helpful. Um, as you can see, I can kind of spike up my brows here. The hold is great. The color in it is pretty opaque. Again, this is one of those things where I feel like, yeah, good quality product. I'm just a little surprised that it was able to when given the amount of different products like this that are out there. And then from a drugstore price, of course, there's the Almay Brow Styler that I love so much. But there I can just feel I have so much hold and that's the one thing that the micro filling pen will not give you is hold. It will fill in great, but it just won't be able to hold them all in place. Well, here's a category they needed but didn't have. Eye primer, Milani eyeshadow primer. It's okay. Sometimes the hardest workers don't get the most credit, but I will always give you that credit on my channel, Milani Eyeshadow Primer. So I'm gonna pop this on and then we will talk about what one for eyeshadow or palette was actually the category. And the winner is Tartlet in Bloom. Talk about something that's been out for a while now. This is very good quality. This is a balance of matte and shimmer. I get it. I, I get why a lot of people, like pretty much anyone could probably try this and like this. I can see how maybe a lot of people who don't wanna to get too experimental color-wise could try this and love this, you know? But it's still fascinating to me because there are so many palettes out there, my friends. I feel like a new palette's coming out darn near every day, so I'm a little little shocked that this one's able to win. Fantastic product, I just think it's interesting. Um, so I'm gonna go down here to this shade called Rebel. Tarte's newer eyeshadow product that I've been playing with has been that little um, round like trio of quads, you know, that sort of like junk roll out from one another. Really good. Definitely reminds me of this kind of quality. But the Allure readers need to try out the Maybelline Nudes of New York. I'm surprised that wasn't a winner. Like that thing is phenomenal and it's pretty much like all these kinds of colors. Okay, so I'm really trying to get that into my entire crease here. So like innermost part of the crease, outer part. Then I think I'll take this shade right here called Sweetheart. It's another matte and we'll use that to blend out over the edge. Then I'm gonna go in with something nice and deep dark. I think I'm gonna use this shade called Activist. It's like, a really, really dark brown near black. Tap off the excess there. And I'm gonna start building this on the outside part of the eye. Really nice, like it just, it comes off almost black, you know, that shade. And then there is more of a pure black right on top of it. Going back in with that E25, just working over my edge. I mean, I, I just have no complaints, really, about this palette. It's really nice. I hadn't used it in a while. I think what some of this stuff reminds you of is the fact that not everybody's a YouTuber, not everybody's really made it their mission to try every latest and greatest new thing. I mean, there are some things that obviously have made a mark on people, made an impact with them, and they're things that have been out for quite a few years now. Okay, so I've got that 
in my crease. Now I kind of want to take something that's just like not quite as light as my original crease shade, not quite as dark as what I just used. Maybe this one right down here, the one called Leader. Get a little bit of that and just take that right into here. You could just get so many classic looks with this palette, right? You can use some of these darker shades as eyeliner. You can do an all matte look. You can have your little pop of shimmer if you want it. And really when Tarte came out with the Tartlet and then this one, the Tartlet in Bloom, I feel like they, they totally raised their standard for themselves on eyeshadow because then I remember these palettes being out and they would come out with some kind of holiday thing. And this became the new standard that we held them to eyeshadow wise. And it's like, okay, Tarte, we know you do this rich buttery thing with your eyeshadows. Now we expect that every time you come out with some sort of palette. Okay, then I think while I'm working with these kind of richer mattes, I'm going to take my little Profusion small pointed brush and I'm gonna go into this shade right here, the one called Leader, and I'm gonna do some soft lower, lower lash line work. I'm loving the look, I'm loving it. Love, love, love. Last stop is the lid. Did you realize there's really only a few shimmers in here? We've got this one that's kind of taupey, this one with a little bit of gold, and then this champagne here. Which one do we wanna do? I think I'm actually gonna take this one up here, this one called Rocker. Hmm, pretty. That really determines like how warm or cool the whole shebang comes off, doesn't it? Pretty. And it's just so smooth, you know, it's not a chunky shimmer. I do get it. This palette is the smoky eye. This palette is the everyday work look. This palette is the barely there look, the all matte look. It's a great neutral palette, it really is. You had a little fall out there, but that's fine. There we go. I'm also gonna take this opportunity to brighten up my lower inner rim here with my ABH double-ended pencil. I use the matte end and I just sweep it through the waterline to immediately brighten things up. The eyeliner winner is from NYX and it's the Epic Ink Liner Pen. So this is a waterproof liner pen, they say. And it's got that brush tip applicator and I gotta say it's really good. I didn't realize I even had this until just a couple days ago. I was even talking about using my uh, Too Faced Better Than Sex liner pen because I thought that was the only one I had, but I looked around and I found this. The ink comes out of it just super easily. It really doesn't seem to smudge at all. It's just very black. So that blackness easily goes right on top of any amount of powder that you've got going on there. It's really a good product. The one like this that I was a little more familiar with was the Wet n Wild uh, Breakup Proof. Really is just like this, maybe a little less juicy than this. This one just has a lot of ease. Yeah, hard to argue with that. I mean, black as can be, easy to apply. These kinds of brush tip pen liners just really take the fussiness out of liquid liner application. I'm taking a little bit of my dark shade here just so I can uh, merge in with that better, make it look a little more finished on the outside. But I'm gonna always say that Milani 17 hour wear is the most like hardcore staying power because that lasted through childbirth. And I don't think I'm gonna have another baby for the sake of testing another eyeliner. <laughs> Although some of you might think I am that crazy, I'm not. So I'm gonna just have to find some other like really deep down intense tests that I can put this NYX one through. There we go, there's my eye look. Minus mascara, which by the way, the winner is L'Oreal Lash Paradise. I think it's worthy, I get it, I love that one. Um, it came out kind of after the Too Faced Better Than Sex, and it was like the same kind of brush, and a lot of people said, oh, it's a dupe, and I was one of those people who thought, no, it's even better. Like, it just kind of held my curl a little better, I thought. I just really like the way it builds up on the lashes. I just very recently, as I was going through my mascara drawer, I realized I'd about used one of those up recently, so I'm on board with it. I'm happy with the Lash Paradise pick, but I just don't have one on hand to use right now. So I'm gonna use another one that I think could be on the cusp of winning this maybe next year or something. Um, this one has gotten a lot of traction, I feel like, this past year. The Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara, so the green details on the tube. Um, this one has gotten so much buzz this past year. I've seen it like featured on Today Show. I know lots of people in my shoes, you know, beauty bloggers, vloggers, whatnot really like this stuff and I could see this being a mega front runner. My only gripe about this is that sometimes 
it flakes a little bit. Not terribly, but it's just, it's been guilty of that a time or two. I'm just gonna be honest. I do love how it builds up on the lashes though. It's really good. It's quick to build up. Um, it's not quite superhero caliber. For me, like superhero is the number one. Wouldn't that have been cool if superhero won this? Like people need to know. People need to know how good that is. But I'm just saying the choice of L'Oreal Paradise makes me think, okay, a lot of people like a drugstore mascara because mascara is one of those frequent repurchases, right? It's nice when you can find a good drugstore one and I'm all on board with Lash Paradise. But this is a good one too and this is a hot one, I think. Is there anybody who likes this mascara but you prefer one of the other versions? Like, don't they have one that's got pink details or purple detail on the tube? This is the one that seems to get the most buzz, the false lash effect. There we go, y'all. I like it. I dig it. Isn't it funny how my mirror squeaks? <laughs> I am going to use my little trick of taking a little bit of Estee Lauder Little Black Primer and using this almost like a seal. I like to do this over any mascara that I think is guilty of flaking, and this just kind of like seals it off and makes it really long wear. Not like waterproof, but it makes it long wear. Guys, the lip winner for lipstick, it's the Charlotte Tilbury Lipstick in Pillow Talk, which I have a little size of. I got this in a little, you know, multi-pack of these once upon a time. It's little, it's, you know, everybody loves this lipstick. I did dupe this lipstick with one from Flower Beauty, and I'll link to the video below where I show that. You really don't have to spend this kind of money on a lipstick, but let's just put the color on and stop and realize that this is apparently the shade people want because like they've done a good job of creating such an identity out of this shade, you know? Instead of brands that put out like a zillion shades, no name colors, like this has been able to get a real foothold and people just love this color and they've built on it and you know, they've got a lip liner and they've got other Pillow Talk products, but it's a nice shade, but I'm just saying, you don't have to spend Charlotte Tilbury money on it. But I'm not shocked at all that that one because that has just gotten so super popular. And the best lip gloss, the one that won for that, is the Fenty Gloss Bomb Universal Lip Luminizer. So I think it's the shade Fenty Glow was like the first one of these that ever came out. For me, I've never been a huge fan. I always feel like this is a little over goopy. The applicator always pulls out just a little more than necessary. It is a nice kind of like beigey nude tone, but there is some sheerness to it. Like if you were to wear this on its own, not put it over lipstick. Well, let's just show you. It has that kind of pretty sheen, sort of lip perfecting look, but not a ton of full coverage color. It feels smooth. It's got a lot of pretty shine, but it's just one of those things where I'm like, it's just even a little more thickness than I want. I would have chosen probably the Milani Keep It Full glosses myself. Also though, in the clean category, I noticed the Bare Minerals Loose Powder Foundation and also the Burt's Bees Glossy Lipstick was in there as well. But yeah, guys, this is my finished look. I'm just looking back over the list. The Fit Me Matte and Poreless, you know, that was kind of a surprise, but it came together with the nice full coverage concealer to give me a look that I'm really pleased with coverage wise. I'm gonna be thinking about a NARS Orgasm blush dupe for sure. This is our little reminder that not everybody is living and dying by every new palette launch and some people just stick to what works and vote on what works. So yeah, this was a lot of fun. I love doing stuff like this. Thank you guys so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.